Laser levels are used for all kinds of construction applications. It is used for surveying an area in order to calculate the elevation of a work location. The tripod, which the laser level sits on, should be placed on a fairly flat area and to ensure stability, the leg should be pressed into the ground. Next, you need to set the laser level on the tripod by screwing the bolt from the tripod into the hole in the bottom of the laser level. Once attached, turn the laser level on and allow it to self-level. This takes a moment, and when it is level, it will begin rotating, allowing it to be detected from all areas of the room. Next, you need your measuring rod, which extends up to 3 meters. For our purposes, we will only extend it to 2 meters. What it does is it allows you to take measurements using the laser. Each extension is one meter, while each number represents a decimeter. Each of these squares is one centimeter, and from that, you can estimate to the closest millimeter. This is your laser detector. What it does is senses the laser coming from the laser uh, level and gives you readings based off of the laser. So what it does is it makes sounds. Fast beeps means you're too, too far below the line of level. And slow beeps means you're too far above. And in the middle, it's just flat lines. In order to get elevation, you first need to find the height of your laser, or height of instrument. To do this, first locate a benchmark. This should be a permanent stationary object you can continue to use as a reference point. Your benchmark will have a fixed elevation of 100 meters. You then need a backsight measurement, which is done by taking a rod measurement from the top of the benchmark. Add your benchmark and backsight to find your height of instrument. Knowing height of instrument is essential when calculating your elevation. Next, we will learn how to measure an intermediate foresight reading, also known as an IFS reading. This reading, in relation to the height of the instrument, is a reading you will use to calculate your elevation. In this example, we will be finding the IFS from the seat cushion of this gator. First step is to extend the measuring rod since the reading will likely be within the first two meters. Next, you should place the laser detector close by the rod, which will allow you to locate the laser. Once you're in the right ballpark, you should then begin to slide your laser slowly up or down the measuring rod until the de detector has flatlined. Once you have been able to get your laser detector to display a flat line reading, this means you are ready to take your IFS measurement. As explained earlier in the video, we are able to read that this IFS measurement is very close to 0 0.862 meters. Now that we know how to use our laser level to successfully measure an IFS reading, we are now ready to calculate our elevation. Elevation is essential to many different projects, especially ones that are dependent on close detail. For example, a landscaping retaining wall. Without proper measurements, the retaining wall has a high chance of failure. 
To calculate elevation, you need to know your height of instrument as well as height of your IFS reading. Once you have both these numbers, it is simply a subtraction calculation of the height of instrument and the IFS. In conclusion, we have learned about the different tools needed when using a laser level, how to perform each associated task, as well as some of the calculations partnered with using a laser level. Hopefully you found this video informative and thanks for watching.